near catastrophic car chase. That is what Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's team are calling it after they say paparazzi relentlessly pursued the couple for two hours last night in New York, even driving onto sidewalks. The scary event triggering many emotions more than 25 years after his mother's death in an auto accident as paparazzi chased her car. A spokesperson for Prince Harry says the Duke of Sussex and his wife Meghan Markle were involved in a near catastrophic car chase in New York, adding it was a relentless pursuit by paparazzi that lasted more than two hours. Now, to be clear, there was no car crash, but an NYPD source says a paparazzi swarm blocked off streets near the 19th police precinct and the couple's protective detail had to figure out extraction plans. This happened after the Women of Vision Awards at the Ziegfeld Ballroom where Meghan Markle was being honored. We're in the city as well. You know, when you hear about what the paparazzi were doing, putting uh, people potentially in danger. Kate, thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Jim? The immigration crisis is expanding far beyond the southern border. Riverhead, New York, which is on Long Island, just declared a state of emergency that outlaws its hotels, motels, bed and breakfast facilities, inns, cottages and campgrounds or short term rentals from accepting migrants and asylum seekers. This is a town of about 36,000 and it's responding to reports that New York City will relocate undocumented people there. And that's just some of the backlash confronting New York's mayor. He has been trying to find places to house these new arrivals from the border, including in public schools. Let's bring in CNN's Polo Sandoval. So Polo, tell us about the pushback that has been happening when it comes to schools. It certainly has been up why education officials in Florida reportedly want to interview fifth graders about a Disney movie that they watched in class and whipping up a world record. We're going to show you how a chef became an internet. State education officials in Florida could interview fifth graders as soon as today after a teacher showed her class the Disney animated movie Strange World, which features a gay character. The teacher is now under investigation over the state's law against the teaching of sexual orientation and gender identity. One of the student's parents, who is a school board member, reported the showing of the movie. Here's what she had to say during a recent school board meeting. She was unaware of the fact that this movie would cause quite this sort of uh, uproar. In fact, it wasn't on the list of movies to not be seen. Um, take a listen to her talking about the defense of her focused on testing and how school closes and school safety. Now you have this investigation going on. The teacher herself said she feels like she's in limbo because obviously with two weeks left and she's already said she's not coming back to the school, what will happen with this investigation? And those are the sort of the steps that people want to know how to move forward with this. And when we Ironically, I bet this is on the student's mind now that it's become a controversy which may not be what and that no parent leaders. intended. Ryan Young, thank you so much. Jim? President Biden canceling two stops on his trip to the Asia Pacific so he can get back to Washington to negotiate raising the debt ceiling. But could it make America's influence weaker while China's gets stronger? President Biden is now on his way to Japan for the G7 summit. His trip to the Pacific region has been cut back, though, canceling stops in Papua New Guinea and Australia next week in order to get back home as negotiations continue over raising the debt ceiling. Today, the president said he's confident that the nation will not default on its debts, even as the June 1st deadline rapidly approaches. Jeremy Diamond is joining us now from the White House. So Jeremy Biden canceled his meeting in Australia Obviously, this was an important one for showing strength in the region as tensions with China are growing. It's worrying, and amid word of that intrusion, we're also learning about an alarming surge in threats against members of Congress. U.S. Capitol Police Chief Tom Manger, who you see uh, right here, he just testified that lawmakers have experienced a 400 percent increase in threats over the last six years. I want to bring in CNN's Lauren Fox, who is on Capitol Hill following this. This is a troubling trend. Yeah, Brianna, it truly is. And for lawmakers, that is tough when they just want to be able to be there for their constituents. Lauren Fox, thank you live for us from Capitol Hill. Horace. A grand jury has indicted the suspect in the murders of these four University of Idaho college students, victims of grisly stabbings. Last Saturday, Kaylee Gonsalves, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Ethan Chapin were awarded posthumous degrees exactly six months after they were killed. 
Today, Brian Koberger, a graduate student in criminology from Washington State University, was indicted on four counts of murder and one count of burglary. CNN correspondent Gene Casares is joining us now on this. So, Gene, police arrested Koberger for these killings back in December. Explain what today's decision means in this investigation. And the next thing to watch out for is, will the prosecution file notice of intent to seek the death penalty? All right, and we'll be looking for that. Gene, thank you so much for the very latest on this. Jim? Yes, sir. The border crisis backlash spilling into New York State in a very big way. The Long Island town of Riverhead just declared a state of emergency that outlaws short-term rentals. That includes hotels and campgrounds from accepting migrants and asylum seekers. The community of 36,000 in Riverhead is responding to reports that New York City will relocate undocumented people there. And that is just some of the opposition that the Big Apple's mayor is facing as he is trying to house new arrivals from the border. A source says that about 300 migrants have been sent to school gyms in the city. CNN's Polo. All right, Polo, we know that you'll be watching. Uh, Polo Sandoval in New York. Thank you. Boris? 13 criminal charges later for a embattled congressman and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has a new strategy on how to handle George Santos while potentially avoiding political fallout. And wash your hands, take your vitamin C, lace up your sneakers. A new study says a little bit of sweat can protect you from the flu. Also, AAA expecting record-breaking travel for the upcoming Memorial Day holiday. What you can do now to avoid headaches later. This just in to CNN, Education Secretary Miguel Cardona says the pause on federal student loan payments is still set to end later this year. The pandemic-related pause has been in place for more than three years and has been extended eight times. In the meantime, the White House is waiting for the Supreme Court's decision involving the administration's separate one-time student loan forgiveness program. The justices are expected to rule in late June or early July, but a decision could come earlier. Jim? health warning now the CDC has issued a travel advisory after five people in Texas became ill with suspected fungal meningitis after traveling to the border town of Matamoros Mexico at least one person died from this four others are hospitalized and health officials are now trying to figure out if these cases are linked and if there are more infections we have CNN senior medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen who is following this story Elizabeth why were these residents in Matamoros for the first place Brianna, this has been happening. An alarming UN climate report today warning the Earth is likely to cross a key temperature red line much sooner than expected. It says that in the next five years, there is a 66% chance our planet will experience a year that is one and a half degrees Celsius warmer than our pre-industrial period. That is a temperature threshold that scientists are extremely concerned about. CNN's Bill Weir is joining us now to explain this. Bill, walk us through this. What do you make of this? Well, it is dialogue that seems to be getting progress, and all that snow has given people some breathing room. It hasn't ended the drought, but it certainly made it uh, less worse in the near term. All right. Uh, Bill Weir, thank you so much. So important. Yeah. We do appreciate it. Jim? You